viewers, once again you're welcome to another edition of Subject Maths. Our topic today is measurement of heat energy and here are her objectives. The first thing you will be learning today is the definition of heat capacity specific heat capacity and latent heat. So you'll be able to differentiate the three. The next objective, which is the second objective, is applications of specific heat capacity and latent heat. You'll be able to understand one or two applications of specific heat capacity in our everyday life. And the last objective we will be considering is calculations on latent heat. We will be solving some few calculations on latent heat. We will be solving calculations on latent heat. Before we continue, I would like you to please subscribe. Please subscribe and like this video. Thank you. Okay, so its capacity is defined as the amount of heat in a substance when the temperature increases by one Kelvin. The amount of heat in a substance when the temperature increases by 1 Kelvin. What does that mean? The quantity of heat in a substance or in a body, when there is 1 degree increase in temperature. So, for every 1 degree rise or every 1 degree change in temperature, the amount of heat in a body is called the heat capacity. So each time I increase the temperature of a body by one degree or by one Kelvin, the amount of heat in that body as at that time is called the heat capacity of the body. And it is measured in joules per kilogram. The amount of heat in a substance or in a body. Now it is calculated as this, its capacity is calculated as mass times SHC. SHC means specific its capacity. Specific its capacity. What does that even mean? Specific capacity okay just like um, its capacity if you look at if you compare both you'll see that the difference between them is the word specific so we can define specific its capacity as the amount of it in one kilogram of a substance it is specific so the amount of heat in one kilogram of a substance when the temperature increases by one Kelvin, I'm just, go, I'm just going to go ahead and write that, is defined, is defined as the amount, as the amount of heat, of heat in one kilogram of a substance where the temperature increases by one Kelvin by one Kelvin or one degree C this also could be one degree C so if you compare the two its capacity and specific capacity the major difference is this. This is specific. The heat 
in the whole body. The heat in the whole substance, when the temperature is increased by one Kelvin, the specific is heat capacity, sorry. While specific heat capacity is the heat, the amount of heat in just one kilogram of a, of a substance. That is the specific heat capacity when the temperature increases by one Kelvin. That is, if this is a body, this is a substance. The amount of it in this substance, when I increase the temperature of this substance by one Kelvin, is equal to its capacity. But when I now take one kilogram out of this substance and I increase the temperature of just one kilogram of this substance by one degree, I increase the temperature by one Kelvin or by one degree. Then, that is specific heat capacity. So take note, one kilogram, it is specific, just one kilogram of the substance is required here. You measure the amount of it in one kilogram when it is increased by one degree C. Okay? So specific heat capacity is measured. It is measured. In joules per kilogram per Kelvin. You know, I said that it's the amount of it in quantity of it is measured in joules. In one kilogram, when it's one degree or one Kelvin rising temperature. So take note of the units. Joules per Kelvin. This is joules per kilogram per kelvin because it is specific. One kilogram is here. Now, for water, the specific heat capacity of water, SHT, the symbol for specific heat capacity is capital C for water, of water. Or in some cases, I could write SHC of water is equal to 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. But in some cases, you'll be given in grams. This is for kilogram. And that's going to be 4.2 joules per gram per Kelvin. I want to believe we can differentiate between heat capacity and specific heat capacity. Latent heat. Latent heat. Now, latent heat is the heat required anytime a body or a substance is undergoing change of state so basically there are two types of latent heat we have latent heat of fusion and we have that of vaporization latent heat of fusion and um, latent heat of vaporization now latent heat of fusion is the amount of heat required to change one kilogram of a solid to liquid without take note without temperature change without change in temperature so the, the quantity of it required to change a body from solid to liquid is what we call latent heat of fission take note solid to liquid and the unit is in joules per kilogram Another um, term we use for this, latent heat of fusion is also called melting point. Fusion is also called melting point. It is also termed melting. It is termed as the melting point. When solid changes to liquid, it is also termed as melting point. Okay. While 
um, latent heat of vaporization on the other hand latent heat of vaporization is the amount of heat required required to change one kilogram of a liquid to vapor without changing temperature. So take note, without changing temperature. So that implies during change of states, during phase change, there is no change in temperature. So latent heat of vaporization is the quantity of heat needed to change a liquid to vapor. I will say at that stage that the temperature is constant. Another term we use for this, it is also called the boiling point. And just like um, fusion, it is measured in joules per kilogram. So take note, we said that during phase change, when a substance is undergoing a change of state, we said that uh, the temperature is always constant. And I just uh, explained to us now that latent heat is the heat required, the amount of heat required for a body to undergo a change of state. So the question I have for us now is that why is it, how is it that during change of state the temperature is constant? Then what happens to the heat absorbed by the ice? Okay? So in the case of latent heat of fusion, assuming this is the ice, and here are the molecules of the ice in the solid state, It is applied to this. Here are the intermolecular forces. Here are the intermolecular forces binding the molecules together. This is the solid form of height, for instance. Now, when it is applied, or whenever the the body is undergoing change of state, like when ice is about to melt, when ice is changing to liquid, what happens is that the heat acquired is used to break off these intermolecular forces. So at that point, the ice, the temperature of the ice, let's say it's at zero degree, remains at zero degree. Even though it is being absorbed, the heat absorbed, instead of melting it, the heat will be used in breaking of these intermolecular forces. So what happens eventually is that these intermolecular forces gets broken off eventually and then the ice changes to liquid. So while this is going on, 
why these uh, molecules, these intermolecular forces, are being broken. The temperature is constant. So if the ice was at zero degrees, it remains at zero degrees until all these forces have been broken, then it immediately changes to liquid. And once it changes to liquid, there is a change in temperature. So I want to believe this uh, illustration is clear. What um, the graph for latent heat, this is what it looks like. The graph of temperature against heat supplied. And I said earlier that temperature could be either in um, degrees, centigrade, or in Kelvin. So this area of the graph, from this point to this point, illustrates the solid. From here to here, we have the liquid. And here we have the steam or the vapor. Okay, let me just use the vapor or gas. So this is the vapor. I'm just going to use vapor, no gas. Vapor. You can see what it looks like. So at this point, from here to here, from here to here, you can see here that the temperature is constant. The temperature here is constant when solid is changing to liquid. So this is a fusion process. Or oh, this is a fusion process. Now, when liquid also is changing to vapor, you can also see a change, a constant temperature. Straight line means it's constant. So this is vaporization. So we have a vaporization here. Or, like I said, this is called our boiling point. And here also is the melting point. So this is point of fusion or melting point. And here also is the boiling point. So you can see that the temperature rises from here to here. This is a solid. It was increased in temperature. The, the substance solidified. Now, when it's going to melt, the temperature here was constant. And then it changes to liquid. After which the temperature was constant again, and then it changes to vapor. So this is what the graph of latent heat looks like. So we move on to the second objective for this lesson, which is application of specific capacity of latent heat. The first application here is the use of water in car radiators, application of specific heat capacity. We use water as a coolant in our car radiators because of the high specific heat capacity of water. That's um, because water can absorb heat without being heated of itself. The second one is cooking utensils. Our cooking pot, because of their high specific heat capacity, that makes them withstand it without melting. It makes it possible for us to cook without the cooking pot being melted because of their high specific heat capacity. The metals are made up of high specific heat capacity. The third example here is um, water and land temperature. If you go out on a sunny day, on an extremely sunny day, 
if you compare the temperature on land and that of water, you find out that the water will remain cool. And you'll be wondering that, is it not the same sun that eaten up the land? That is also um, shining on the water. The simple explanation to that is because of the high specific heat capacity of water, like I explained in the first um, application. Because it has a very high specific heat capacity of 4,200 joules per kilogram. One kilogram of water has 4,200 joules of it. So you can imagine, that's why water can actually absorb, can actually take in, withstand it without it getting well, now, the second one is application of latent heat. The first application of latent heat is in the cooling system, like in our refrigerators, in our air conditioners, and so on. The second one is the use of ice cubes. Most of all, we use ice cubes in our houses um, to take children. We don't even know the principle behind it. We just know that when we put on put ice cubes in our glass cup or in our glass of juice after a while it becomes chill. So that is just latent heat of fusion. That is one application of latent heat of fusion. The the ice cubes absorb the heat from the juice. And that is why the, the, the juice becomes cool. The ice melts by absorbing the heat from the bottle of juice, while the juice in turn becomes cool. And like I said earlier, one cube, one ice, one kg of ice, the latent heat of one kg of ice, three, three, six. Latent heat of ice is 336,000 kilograms. You can imagine kilogram per kilogram. You can imagine this amount of heat in just one ice kilogram of ice. Now, another one is in hailstorm. You know what happens in hailstorm? Immediately after the hailstorm, you find out that the weather becomes cold. Once um, the ice has melted, you find out that the weather becomes cool. That's because the ice actually absorbs all the heat from the surrounding to melt. And in return, the surrounding becomes cool. The last application I'll discuss here is in the steaming of food. What happens when we are steaming our food? You find out that the lid of whatever it is you are using, I mean the container. If you check underneath it, you will see the condensed vapor. So the condensed vapor actually gives back it to the food. And that is what actually cooks the food. The heat released by the condensed vapor on the food is what actually cooks our food. I want to believe that this... Moving on to our last objective for this lesson, which is calculations on latent heat. Calculations on latent heat. Q is equals to ML. L equals to Q over M. This L stands for latent heat. The Q is the quantity of it and it is measured in joules. L is latent heat. Latent heat. It could be latent heat of fusion, it could be that of vaporization. M. Latent heat here is measured in, in kilogram, in joules per kilogram. In joules per kilogram. M is the mass. 
in kilogram. At times they could give you in grams. But if it is in gram, you have to convert to kilogram. Except if your specific capacity is given in gram or if your latent heat is given in grams. Then you can leave it. Okay. So for electrical method, in case the heat is supplied via electrical means, then these formulas here are applicable. Here we said Q is equal to ML. Quantity of health, well, heat is equal to ML. But in the case where the source of heat is via electricity, so we have the first one, IVT is equal to ML. That means from the question, you'll be giving current, you'll be giving voltage and time is equal to ML. Or it could be PT if you are giving power or time. It could be this V squared T over R, it could be I squared R T is equal to ML. So I is the current measured in amp. The V is the voltage. The V volt. The T, of course, is the time in seconds. P is equals to power, and the unit of that is watt. R, of course, is the resistance measured in ohms. So basically, these are the formulas that we will be using. Or these are the formulas applicable to calculations on latent heat. This is all you need for any calculation of latent heat. So we will go ahead and solve one or two questions. So quickly, let's consider few calculations on latent heat. The first example here says, calculate the quantity of heat, in it, of heat required to change 200 gram of ice to water at 0 degree C. The specific latent heat of fusion of ice is equal to 336 joule per gram. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to write out our parameters. So from the question, we are given the mass, the mass of ice. So from the question, we have the mass of ice to be 200 grams. And we are also given the specific latent heat of fusion of ice, which is held to be this, 336 joules per gram. So we are asked to find the quantity, which is Q, the quantity of it required. Now before we move on, I want you to take note of something, which is the unit. Since the specific latent it is given in joules per gram, so there is no need to convert the mass from gram to kilogram. I'll take that again. Now because the specific latent heat of fusion is given in joule per gram. So we are going to leave this mass also in grams. We don't need to change it to kilogram. We are both in gram to gram. So we work directly. Okay. So using the formula Q is equal to Hempel. where our M is 200 and our L is 336. So we have Q, which is the quantity of it required to be 67,200 joules. Take note of that. It is measured in joules. So back to the question. The quantity of it required to change 200 grams of ice to water is 67,200 joules. 
So our second example here says, a 90 watt, a 90 watt immersion heater is used to supply energy for five minutes. So take note of that, the time is five minutes. 90 watts is the power. So I'll go ahead and write out our parameters like I always do. So the 90 watts is the power. So we are given 90 watts as power. We are given the time to be five minutes. Okay? So they said the energy supply is used to completely melt 180 gram of a solid. So the mass of the solid here is 180 gram. At its melting point, neglecting its losses to the surrounding, calculate the specific latent heat of fusion of the solid. So we are asked to calculate the specific latent heat of fusion of the solid, which is held. Okay? So, um, we will recall from the formulas I gave us previously that PT is equal to HL. Going by our parameters, our parameters will de de um, determine which of the formulas to use. But before we move on, you see that our time is a minute. So we need to change that to seconds. So we need to change this to seconds. And that will be 5 times 60, which equals to 300 seconds. Because 60 seconds make 1 minute. So our time is now in, in seconds, which is 300 seconds. So let's just impute our values into these formulas. So P is 90. T is now 300. F is 180. And then L, that is what we are looking for. So we divide both sides by 180. This cancels this. This cancels this. So we have 9 here, 2. 9 here is 10. 2 here, 1. 2 here is 5. So we have. 5 times 30, which equals to 150 joules per gram. Don't forget our masses in gram. So, the latent heat of fusion of the solid, which is L, is equals to L is equals to 150 joules per gram. So, take note of that. I want to believe that that's example is very explanatory. The last example here is this. It says, what is the total amount of heat energy required to convert 0 0.5 kilogram of ice? So the mass of ice means 0 0.5 kilogram. So I'm just going to write out our parameters. So mass of heist, 0 0.5 kilogram at minus 15 degrees C. So the theta, that's temperature of heist is equals to minus 15 degrees C into steam steam at temperature of steam is equals to 0, 100 degrees C and here we have we have specific heat capacity of ice to do this that of water, latent heat of ice. Sorry, this is ice. And that of steam to be this. 
So let's get started. The first thing, whenever you're giving a problem like this, the first thing you need to do is to break it down. Break it down. From the question, we are asked to find the heat energy required to convert ice at minus 15 degrees C to steam. So that's, we are changing from solid to vapor. And that involves three different phases. That means first we change from solid, which is high, from solid to liquid, then from liquid to vapor. So, we don't go, going to go ahead and write. The first phase change is from ice, which is solid, from ice at minus 15 degrees C to zero degrees C. You know zero degrees C is still ice. Okay, so melting. So we have minus 15 degrees C to zero degrees C. So let's find the quantity of it for ice is equal to at minus 15 degrees C to zero degrees C. That's MC change in theta. The M is the mass of the ice, which is 0 0.5 times. Now, before we move on, you'll find out that I didn't bother to convert this kilogram to gram. I left it in kilogram. Why is that? That's simply because if you come here, you'll see that we are giving all of our units in kilogram. So that means I'm working in kilogram. There's no point converting. So I have 0 0.5 times C. C is specific heat capacity of height. So from here we are giving specific heat capacity of height to be 2,100 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. And then the change in temperature, which we will calculate now, that's the change in temperature between fifth, minus 15 to 0. The difference between 15 and 0, that's 15. Which is 15. So multiplication of this is equal to 31,500 joules. So the quantity of it when ice melt from minus 15 degrees to 0 degrees the quantity of it is equal to this so that's the first phase change now the next one is ice at 0 degrees C to zero degrees C. Remember, we said when there is a phase change that the temperature is constant. So the ice here has not started melting. The temperature only reduced from minus 15 to zero. But melting takes place from zero degrees C to zero degrees C. So ice at zero degrees C to zero degrees C melt to liquid. So here, what we calculate here now, the quantity of it here, the Q is equal to ML. Why? Why are we using this formula? Why not this? This is simply because here there is a phase change. There is a change of phase here. High melt at this point. So, my hand still remains 0 0.5. Latent heat. Here we are using the latent heat of fission of ice. Latent heat of ice, which is 336,000 joules per kilogram. So I have 336,000. This multiplied by this. Give me 168,000 joules. 
So that is um, for stage two. Now the third, the third stage now is water at zero degrees C. You know it's still going to be very very chilled. It's still going to be very very cold at zero degrees C. So it needs to change from zero degrees C to one hundred degrees C. Zero degrees C to one hundred degrees C. So I'm going to have Q at this um, temperature. There's no change of state. So I will use this normal formula, which is Q equals to MC change into time for water. So I'm still going to use um, the same mass. It has melted. It's still the same mass. I'm making it up. Now I'll use the specific heat capacity. Of water, specific capacity of water, which is 4200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin times the change in theta that's 100, the difference between 100 to so that's 100. Multiplication of this gives me 210,000 joules. So take note of this. So the next um, stage is we've calculated for water. The next stage now is from 100 degrees C to 100 degrees C. That's from the point it starts boiling to when it changes to steam. So that's another phase change. Phase change. Okay. So the fourth stage now. going to be steam. 100 degrees C to 100 degrees C. And you agree with me that there is no change in temperature. So that means there is a change of state here. It's changing from liquid as 100 degrees C to steam at that same temperature. So when there is a change of state, this is what we use. We make use of Q is equals to him here. So I'm just going to go ahead. Q is equals to him here. So the quantity of it here is equals to mass. It's to make use of very profound. The latent heat of vaporization of the steam, which is 2.26 times 10 raised to the power 6 joules per kilogram. Now, if I multiply that, I have 1130000 joules of it. But you remember from the question, we are asked to find the total quantity of it, the amount of it, in changing highs from 15 degrees C to steam at 100 degrees C. So, these are the steps. So how we need to do now is to add up all the quantity of heat at every stages. So what we have the total So we have, let me just label it. 
So Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4. And that gives me Q1 is 31,500 joules plus 168,000 joules plus 210,000 joules. And I have 130,000 1, joules all together. And this gives me 1539500 joules of it. So the quantity of it required to change heights at minus 15 degrees C to 100 degrees C of steam is is equals to this one million five hundred and thirty nine thousand five hundred joules which can also be written in standard form as okay I could just come ahead come right here and write it in standard form as one point five times 10 is to power count it this way 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 10 is to power 6 joules so I want to believe that is well understood sizes for you to attempt you can also check calculations on measurements of heat and energy later on the website.